Welcome to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. Together, we're exploring the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Tony Hare is an independent certified coach, teacher, and speaker with the John Maxwell team, author and inspirational speaker who lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina. He has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, a master's degree in pastoral counseling, and a doctorate of philosophy in Christian counseling. Dan DeBruler is a retired U.S. Army communications specialist and has spent more than 20 years encouraging listeners through Christian radio. And we are so glad to be with you today. My name is Dan DeBruler, and I know that Dr. Hare is here. I can see him walking in from the parking lot. And here's how you know this is real live radio. I just choked on a glass of water, and I hardly got a voice right here. But I want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us for today's Your Life. We're going to dig in to the subject of spiritual wisdom today. As we look at the letter that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, it's in, we're going to begin in chapter 2 today as we talk about what spiritual wisdom, spiritual maturity actually looks like. Beginning in verse 6 of 1 Corinthians 2, Paul writes this, We do, however, speak a wisdom among the mature, but not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. On the contrary, we speak God's hidden wisdom in a mystery a wisdom God predestined before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age knew this wisdom, because if they had known it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. And then in verse 9 he says, But as, as it is written, what no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human heart has, has conceived, God has prepared these things for those who love him. And then he concludes in verse 10 with this, Now God has revealed these things to us by the Spirit, since the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. You know, Paul begins 1 Corinthians chapter 2, picking up on a train of thought that he left behind in the middle of chapter 1. And there he wrote that Christ did not send him to preach the gospel in Corinth with words of eloquent wisdom, because to do so would risk emptying the cross of Christ of its power. And this is where we pick up in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 10, as Paul begins to explain his reliance on God and the wisdom of God rather than, rather than on the knowledge that he has collected along the way, rather than the experiences he has lived through, rather than any of that. Paul is relying 100% on the wisdom that God speaks to him and gives him all along the way. And with that, let me just say welcome to Dr. Tony here. Thank you for being here, brother. Great, great. Glad to see you again, my brother Dan. And uh, we are, I'm glad to see you already moving and uh, discussing uh, exactly where we'll be at today. And uh, Yeah, I just, I just read through uh, 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 2, verses 6 through 10, kind of introduced um, where, where Paul left off in yes. chapter 1 and how he begins chapter 2, mm-hmm. speaking about his reliance on on God's wisdom mm-hmm. in this case. And, 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 you know, one of the interesting things about this particular uh, verse or chapter, uh, when we look at 2 and looking at verses 6 through 10, what I thought about and what I think about every single time that I read this, I think about, you know, and I, I, the question that's posed is, who knows you? And I think a lot of times, Dan, my experiences from uh, this weekend, I actually had the awesome opportunity to uh, go to the uh, Davis-Garcia fight in uh, Vegas. So I'm right there on the floor watching the fight. And after it's over, I, I'm about to leave. And I, I pause for a second uh, to just let the traffic die down a little bit. But then when I went out to front to leave out of the uh, T-Mobile arena, there are escalators where everyone's coming downstairs, and it's like a sea of people mm. just flowing down the escalators on to your left and to your right. And as I look back and forth to my left and my right, the first thing that comes to my mind is that we've all come here. We've enjoyed this spectacular fight. Now we're leaving, but do we know who knows us? We know Davis, and we know Garcia the Boxers. All right. We know them. But do we know who knows us and do the right 
people or the right person know us that they would want, as we added value to Davis and Garcia's lives by being there, spending our money, investing into them, you know, Mm -hmm. well, an investment has also been made into us through Jesus Christ. And this wisdom escapes us on a daily basis. And we actually look at the world to share with us who we are when God and Paul, is, as he's dealing with his proclamation here in spiritual wisdom, he's sharing with us so importantly in verse 9, what no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, and no human Heart, no human mind has conceived, has thought about, has a perspective on. God has prepared these things for those who love him. So God has prepared a knowledge of ourselves for us to learn more about ourselves. But the only way we can find out about that knowledge is through him, in him, by the Spirit that lives in us. But very seldomly, Dan, do we take the time to ask the Spirit of God to tell me about me. Man, you know, as you were giving us that that uh, mental picture there of <laughs> of all of those people, that sea of people coming down those escalators. Sea of people, you man. know. I mean, you're talking about an arena that holds what thirty, forty thousand yes, people, I and mean, it was filled. Pretty, think about how God sees us, man. Yeah. Um, really, when you think about the number of <laughs> of people, the number of prayers, the number of yes, um, there you go, everything, there you go, that God is processing yes. simultaneously. Yes. And to be known, to be <laughs> known in that setting, to know mm-hmm. that you know it's not it's not do we know who God is? Yes. Does God ho- know who, who we, we are? Have. Hey, Man, hey. that's that's a that's a big question. It's one we have to ask. It's a huge question and processing just as I look to my left and right and I saw those individuals this and I'm standing there beside one of the custodians and she's she's standing there and she's waving at everybody coming down the stairs saying, Bye, nice you came in. She's being, you know, very hospitable. And I and I'm I'm I think what triggered the thought was she said something like a sea of people. And so when I looked at both sides and I said, I said, man, look at these people. And as I'm processing and my eyes are scanning and I'm watching everyone, seeing all the different nationalities, the different, you know, clothing and the jury, all the things that the husband, the wives, the single people holding hands. I'm looking at all of this and I'm saying to myself, when this is over, because so many things was going through my head watching all of this. I said, when this is all over and all of those individuals go home and they undress, they take everything they have off and they're about to go to bed and they take that last look in the mirror, do they know themselves? And if they don't, do they know who to ask? And that's where that spiritual wisdom and knowledge, we find ourselves, um, People will say to us, we scored, coming up in high school, you may have scored a, you know, a C or a D or, or E and maybe like me, an F on the test. And the teacher begins to say, oh, well, he's an F student. Oh, well, he's a G student. I mean, a, a D student or a C student. And you begin to identify with what those of this world say about you who are trying to grade you based on a test you took versus you asking the creator, the one who planned your life, the one who's already seen it from the beginning to the end, knew I was going to make an F on that test. You know what I'm saying? But he still, the results at the end of the day is that I'm going to be here sitting across from Dan doing this radio show, and this is the same kid that made an F. What if I were to believe what those people said about me and not come into a relationship with Jesus Christ and ask the Spirit or allow the Spirit of the living God to reveal to Tony who he is and what he's going to do because I'm not finished yet? You know, when when we think about this, when we put this this particular passage, yes, this, this letter to the church in Corinth, mm-hmm. in context, <laughs> we, we realize this is where Paul, um, <laughs> where he realizes who he is and yes. who he is not. Yes, um, you know he his his first trip to this <laughs> to this area, he came in with all that he knew. And he stepped into an arena where the minds that are above all mm-hmm. other minds come to discuss 
uh, events <laughs> and ideas and ologies yes. Yes. You know, that, that are beyond yes. uh, typical comprehension. Yes. Yet he chose to bring what he knew into that arena, yes. hoping to wow them with all of his knowledge about this God who he knew yes. was superior, and this God is superior, Absolutely. and was then as well. That's just right. And he, but he sought to, by eloquent speaking, yes. to sway these great thinkers of the day. And he was humbled, to say the least. He was humbled. He realized that even though he did know, even though he had wisdom and that he had mm-hmm. knowledge, he mm-hmm. was humbled in the... Um, <laughs> in in the return from those conversations Absolutely. and from his, from his uh, oratory, and uh, and he came back and in this letter mm-hmm. uh, in this part he's writing, look, I preach now nothing but Christ and Him crucified. I know the risen Savior of this world, and I have met Him yes. personally in a way personally. that many of you never will. But I have met Him, mm-hmm. and I know this God who is far above that, and yes. I, I trust that yes. crucifixion, and I trust that yes. resurrection. Absolutely. And with him, the confidence at which He spoke and how He spoke was not because He was so intelligent and had learned at the feet of Gamaliel, but it was because confidence was in God, the power of God, not in His speech, not in His wisdom, not in the wisdom and and speech of all of those intelligent people, but Paul, what he truly understood, yes, I was Saul. That's who I thought I was until I ran into the risen Christ, and he changed my name so that it would identify with who I would become. And I think that in life, we run across so many people, and this speaks volumes to Paul's ability to uh, minister the Word of God and to uh, witness the Word of God uh, with an understanding of who he is now. How does that really help you and I? Well, the believer, I know who I am in Christ. I know that he created every human being. So I know that that which he has done for me and his knowledge of me gives me the ability to look at other people with the same confidence that I look at myself and will go the extra mile for that individual in my witness to them to be able to see themselves because they may not see how great they really are before they do anything because they're operating off man's wisdom, what man has said about them, what, 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 what a test has said about them, what, uh, how they felt about uh, in a, something that they did not achieve, how that's made them feel when that was just a moment in time. We're talking about your life over a span of time, which reaches all the way to eternal life when you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think what Paul was really looking at here is trying to get everyone to understand that there is a wisdom that goes far beyond the wisdom of man. That is the true wisdom that when applied to your life, you will live what is called the abundant life. You will live a fulfilled life because now you have an understanding of who you are, not what you do. And you can identify with who you are, which adds so much value to what you are able to do. You know, I think Paul would attest to the fact, and I would certainly agree with him that, mm-hmm. that even though how how we're how we're uh, casting a little shade today, yes. that yes. human wisdom is not a bad thing. Uh-uh, no. it, it's good for us to know, but there is a difference between human wisdom mm-hmm. and that secret, hidden wisdom of God. See, mm-hmm. God, because God's wisdom. Well, that includes his plan, which was established long before any of us and any of this world (laughs) was even formed, and it offers salvation to those Mm -hmm. who believe in Christ's death. Mm -hmm. And that's where we begin to see the difference, because when we begin to lean on spiritual wisdom over all that we have gained and attained in this world, we begin to see things from an entirely different perspective. And, and you know, uh, Dan, when he, uh, in verse, I'll say verse 8 here, he says, none of the rulers of this age knew this wisdom because if they had known it, 
they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Mm. But as it is written, and he, then he goes to the what eyes have not seen, ears, which, you know, you're talking about the sensical life, you know, because we live and experience the world through the five senses. And then he says what no human heart, what the mind cannot even, it, it hasn't conceived. God prepared these things for those who love him. So the question is, do you love God? If you love God, verse 10 says, now God has revealed these things to us, to you and I, by the Spirit that lives in those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. He says, since the Spirit searches, the Spirit that's in, searches, it's a capital S, searches everything, even the depths of of God, all right? Verse 11, he says, For who knows a person's thought except his spirit, small s, within him? He says, In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now, this brings the relationship uh, between the believer and God right at home. No one knows the thoughts of God. So what you might think about yourself, I mean, man, listen, it is, what you might think about yourself doesn't even, can't even compare You know, because no human heart has conceived it. No human mind has conceived it. You don't really know how awesome you really are. (laughs) I mean, this is powerful. This is because when you really believe what Jesus says, what God says, that, 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 that he knows you can't even begin to imagine. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you've been through a divorce. I don't care if your children. I don't care if your husband. I don't care whoever. I don't care if you lost your job. You can't even begin to understand the thoughts that God has of you. But the Spirit of God is just waiting to tell you how awesome you really are. Yeah, you see, a human wisdom, I mean, we, oh, have, we have limitations, man. <laughs> I mean, we, we can only know what we Good can God. observe with our senses and mm-hmm. with our eyes, um, and we can only process what we can process mm-hmm. by human reason. That's right. And that simply can't see or understand that's right. the truth of God. That's, that's right. That's it right there, you know. That's right. So in order to believe God's mm-hmm. wisdom, we it's got to be revealed to us through his spirit. That's because right. The, the spirit of man, the, the little s spirit yes. of man, we can only go so far. Only go so far. And this is one of the reasons, you know, when you talk to a lot of theologians, you know, they and, and people, and, and it's great to to talk about Paul and uh, to talk about Peter and to, you know, to to talk about Abraham and Moses and, and talk about all these great individuals, you know, of time past. But now it comes a time in this day and time to talk about you, to talk about Johnny, who's accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, Mary, who's accepted Christ, Louise, who's accepted Christ, you know, Bobby, who's accepted Christ. You have the same thing. See, in you, and more so now, and you're here for a time such as this. So ask God, who am I? Because he knows you. And don't, uh, 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 how can I say, devalue yourself based on man's wisdom. It's the wisdom of God that will share with you who you really are. In verse 12, then, it says, now we, now, now we, uh, and you can put your name there. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who comes from God so that we may what understand we may what comprehend. See what has been freely given. It didn't cost us anything freely given to us by God. And what has God freely given You and I, a knowledge of who we are in this world at this particular time, on this particular day, no matter what you might be going through, God sees better for you. And saw that you'd be going through this before the day even started, but he already fixed it, so you crossed the finish line in victory. Now, even Paul, the guy who, who wrote this, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're picking this apart, yeah. but even, even the guy who wrote this, 
you know, he <laughs> he came around to the place, and, yes, and we're Lord. talking about an educated guy. Yes, you know, Lord. For, for, the day, educated. for the day, this guy knew some stuff. He knew some stuff. You know, he, he had sat at the feet of um, some of the world's greatest hey, teachers to days. that date. That's and right. and again, you know, he arrived <laughs> he arrived there um, <laughs> thinking himself worthy of or yes. ready to anyway That's to right. debate to debate the minds of the day <laughs> and and tell them about this Jesus about this Christ about this God yes. who, with whom he had gained a mm-hmm. lot of knowledge mm-hmm. but he was doing it with with what he knew to do <laughs> he was doing it with what Paul and eventually he arrives at the point that we read here today mm-hmm. you know that I preach Christ yes. and him crucified That's right. because what I know what I have learned what I can even hope to learn in the remainder of my life none of that trumps who Christ is. None of it trumps the wisdom of God. None of it trumps what I will gain by listening to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things, Dan, at the uh, end of, uh, you know, Brian Garcia, he had, he, had, he had lost to Tank. But, you know, something interesting that he had said even that night and the next day, he says that he may have lost the fight, but he trusts in his Lord and Savior, mm. Jesus Christ. So he's won. Anyway, this is something he has to go through as he goes to 140-pound weight class and to dominate that weight class. So there's a lot of times that we uh, really don't – we take an incident that occurs in our life, and we actually paint ourselves, our whole life, our future. See, we carry our past, our present and our future with us each and every day. But most of us live in that chapter called the past. And we live in the past and we read those pages over and over and over again till it affects our present, which ultimately affects our future. Now, that's in the knowledge and the wisdom of man. But when we look at our past and see it through the lens of the Spirit of God and we look at our present, we can actually see a better future when we look through the mirror of the Word, when we look at who we are in Him. You see, if I'm in Him, then I can't see me. All I see is Him. He's victorious. So that means if I'm in Him, Dan, I am also victorious because I am allowing him, see, to go through this with me and before me and empowering me to move with a sense of urgency and excitement and encouragement that I can share with another person. Even when I'm having a tough time, I can still share with someone else how awesome this is going to be. Let's walk together to the other side because I'm coming through. You're my brother in Christ. You coming through. Matter of fact, we're already through it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, when I, when I look at, at my life, when I look at, you know, all that I know, all that I have learned, yes, sir. compared to what God knows <laughs> and what God is breathing in, you know, I, I had a recent conversation. Yes, and sir. Let me just say this. Um, I, I live with the uh, survivor of a brain injury, uh-huh. and that means we have a lot of notes around the house because yes. there's a lot of forgetting that okay. goes on. So we have notes about mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. on everything. I heard that. And, and a note that I saw recently said, what if God has already provided? And it was, it was, mm-hmm. it was based on a prayer for God, will you, will you, will you? Yes. <laughs> I can yes. stop right there. Yes, God, yes. will you? Yeah, yeah. And, and the question that was asked on that little piece of note paper mm-hmm. that was stuck on a cabinet or a window or whatever, <laughs> <laughs> wherever I saw it, I can't, I can't decipher one yeah. from the other. But yeah, yeah. It, what if God has already provided? What if in our limited understanding, yes. we don't, we don't grasp what God has already done for us, what mm-hmm. he has already provided. We don't, uh, other than, Following closely and seeking to be in His will, mm-hmm. and 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 hoping that we are moving in His will. Mm-hmm. What if He has already made the provision available to us, and we're already walking in that because He's got this plan that is far above our understanding, mm-hmm. and we're already walking toward the thing that we think we're still praying about, but that God has already answered us about. Absolutely, and Dan, if we, you know, would just, as a matter of fact. For, Before, when I look at John chapter 16, verse 13, here is what the word of God says. It says, when the spirit, well, I'll start at 12. He says, I still have many things to tell you, 
But you can't bear them now, uh, Jesus talking with uh, the disciples uh, on his way uh, to the cross. And he says this, he says, verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, now I want everyone to know the spirit of truth is here now, he will guide you into what? All truth. This truth that he's talking about here is the knowledge. It, it, you can, it's the knowledge of what they would be going through, the knowledge of their opposition, and also the victory that was ahead of them. Now, when I go back to Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and when you were talking, I just, it just start clicking in my head. He says here with the question at you is, what? for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for a disaster. See, to give you a future and a hope. So now, if we look at this in context or actually apply it to what we are looking at in Corinthians, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's decoration, plans for your well-being, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Well, in order for these plans, this future, this hope to be revealed to you and I, we would only be, it would only be revealed to us by way of the Spirit. That's that wisdom. See, because we can have uh, knowledge, got a lot of information. We can have, uh, we can comprehend uh, and understand that information. And a lot of us stop right there, Dan, but the application of it, see, the wisdom of it, which the Spirit will help you and I apply it to our lives that we can be able to experience what eyes have not seen, hear what ears have not heard, and conceive what the human mind has not, that which was prepared for you and I. God has something awesome for each one of us, Dan. All we have to do is wake up in the morning and ask the Spirit of God, Lord, guide me, lead and guide me throughout this day that I may glorify your name in the earth. But all too often, (laughs) we wake up and instead we start the day with God I need. (laughs) Or God I want, or, or, you know, if if you're a little slower like me, God, wouldn't it be cool if? (laughs) Yeah, or or we say, man, I I need 15 more minutes. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) It's amazing when you, there is nothing And we have to really go outside of uh, the natural. We have to go outside of the carnal, go beyond that to really, uh, because just you can't even understand this with with the human mind that that we're living in history, that our lives are already complete in the eyes of God, that our lives are finished. We won. That's why Jesus is seated. Because the Holy Spirit is here on the earth. That's what's here today, living in you and I. Because God's finished, Jesus is finished, the Holy Spirit is here enabling us to finish and usher in the return of Christ. And we need to be about that business, man. (laughs) Yeah, well, going back to that note, you know, what if God has already provided? You know, are we walking in it? Are we content enough to say, hey, if this is what God's got for me, man, I'm in. I'm all in. All in. And that's what, Dan, we have to be all in. And I truly um, understand, as I was sharing with someone uh, earlier, that, yes, you may vacillate between two or three things. But as long, because of all the experiences that we have in life, we have these images and these pictures, and we've we've seen ourselves doing this, not doing this. We see all the roadblocks that could be possibly up ahead. But after we consider all of that and come back to reality, because what we're seeing is really not real. What we do not see is what's real in that spirit world where God has already prepared the way the truth, and the life for us to live and bring the kingdom rule of God here on earth through the spiritual wisdom he's provided for us. And this is where we bump up against our own limitations, (laughs) where we realize we don't know what we think we know, but the God does. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday. You've been listening to Your Life with your hosts, Dr. Tony Hare and Dan DeBruler. 
Join us again next time as we explore the questions everyone has about life, love, parenting, and relationships. Your Life airs Tuesdays at 2 p.m. on Christian 105.7, and you can always download, listen, and share online. Just look for Your Life wherever you listen to podcasts.